In this video, I'm going to show you how to take a super noisy image like this one and clean it up to this in no time. I'm also going to answer one of the most asked questions I get about noise reduction, and that is, when should you apply it? Should you apply it in the beginning with your raw file or at the end on your edited file? We're going to take a look at that right now. But first, if you're new to this channel, welcome. My name is Brian Matias. I help photographers like you get better looking nature, landscape, and wildlife photos using apps like Lightroom and Photoshop and other third-party apps, like one of the ones we're going to cover in this video. All right, so let's not waste any time. Let's jump over to the computer over here. And I'm gonna start with this image over here. Now, you might be wondering like, where did this image come from? Actually, you can download this very raw file from Topaz Labs' website. And in case you were wondering, the app that I referred to is Topaz Photo AI. That's what I'm gonna be showing you in terms of getting rid of noise reduction with like no effort whatsoever. So if you go to this website here, you can see the URL right above, or you can do a Google search for Topaz Labs Wildlife Photography, and this page should come up. And then just go down here and you can click and download the original raw file for yourself, which is what I did. And if I look at the metadata and EXIF information, you can see that it was taken with a Canon EOS R5 at a whopping ISO 40,000, which wildlife photographers know sometimes is required uh, to get a fast enough shutter speed so that you can get proper focus and sharpness with, you know, wildlife because wildlife animals uh, move around all the time. So you can see here that uh, this image is just riddled with noise um, and it's spread evenly throughout the image. So here you've got this photo of the monkey. And again, it's super noisy. Now, the question that I get asked like I said, more than any others, when it comes to noise reduction is when should I do it? And I'm of the philosophy that something like noise, you want to, whatever you're using to get rid of the noise, you want it to have as much data as possible. And in this regard, that would mean providing the noise reduction tool with a raw file because a raw file has the uncompressed original sensor data of the camera. And this is a raw file. You can see that this is a CR3 file which is Canon's native RAW format. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna compare. Let's compare what happens if we send a RAW file at the beginning of the workflow to Topaz Photo AI, and then um, we'll take the same photo and we'll make some edits and then send it over to Topaz Photo AI, but it will be processed. So it will already be, the, the edits we made in Lightroom will be baked in and we'll get a JPEG back. So let's start with this. In order to send a RAW file uh, to Topaz Photo AI from Lightroom, all you have to do is go to File, Plugin Extras, and then select Process with Topaz Photo AI. Now I wanna make one quick, I wanna make uh, just an example here or illustrate something really quickly here in the develop module. Let's say I go ahead with my raw file and I make some adjustments, like I brighten it and I add some contrast um, and maybe some vibrance. Uh, so here we have obviously an edited photo. Watch what happens if I send the raw file to Topaz Photo AI. You'll see in Topaz Photo AI here, um, if I click and hold, that's the original photo. It sent the unedited photo. So Topaz Photo AI does not recognize any edits that you make to a raw file. If you go through that file plugin extra workflow, that allows Lightroom to send over the raw file and it'll return a DNG file. So that's just something that I wanna illustrate. If you make any edits in Lightroom and you go to file, plugin extras, and then process with Topaz Photo AI, those changes will not come over. So it's as if you have no changes. So here, what happens when you open up a file in Topaz Photo AI is there is this utility here called Autopilot. And what Autopilot does is it looks at the photo and it it looks to see if whether there are any objective image quality issues, specifically with noise, sharpness, and resolution. And those are the things that it will attempt to fix. It'll also look for faces if uh, it's a portrait, for example. And in some cases here, like with this animal, it actually has a false positive. It's not supposed to find animals as of yet, as far as I know. It's supposed to look for humans. But um, if the image had low quality faces, let's say the image was low resolution, um, then it would also attempt to improve the look of the face. But what I want to do is show you, I did nothing. All I did was I sent the image from Lightroom to Topaz Photo AI and Autopilot. You can see it's using raw image data and it applied a, uh, 
an AI model to adjust the noise. And it, it selected the, the optimal settings in terms of the noise reduction strength and the detail. And it's also using its strong model. So I did nothing here. You can see that we're using autopilot settings because the dot indicates such. If I were to uh, make a change, the dot would become hollow. And so I'll just click here to reset. All right, so with noise reduction done, you can see if I zoom in, just, I mean, the, the improvements are, are amazing. Like here, it's just, it's crazy. So what I'm gonna do is literally nothing. Open the image and click save to Adobe Lightroom Classic plugin. This will return a DNG file back to Lightroom. And so now in Lightroom, you can see this is our original CR3 file. There's the DNG that Topaz Photo AI returned back to Lightroom. And so let's just do a quick compare to see the improvements. And so, I mean, to me, this is just stunning. No joke, this is absolutely amazing. Um, look at all the noise that's kind of eating away at all the details. And here, there's no noise, but all of the details from the fur on the face, for example, have been not only retained, but enhanced in my opinion. And so you might be wondering, okay, well, that's great. That This shows a good example of what would happen if I sent a raw file. But what if there are some people who just don't want to do that? Because for whatever reason, they, you, know, you might have your own uh, editing workflow, and I totally get that. So let's just see what happens if we edit the raw file using Lightroom, making some tonal changes, some color changes, and then sending it over to, um, to uh, Topaz Photo AI. So... We'll open the image here. And actually, before I do anything, the first thing I'm gonna do is right click and create a virtual copy because the other thing I wanna do is compare Topaz Photo AI's noise reduction to Lightroom's because I think that's that's a fair comparison. Everyone um, who has Lightroom has access to the noise reduction sliders under the develop module. And I wanna kind of illustrate the, I guess, benefits or improvements that Topaz Photo AI provides for noise reduction. So, um, and you'll know it's a, it's a virtual copy because it has this little page curl here on the bottom left of the thumbnail. So again, here's the original. Let's go to the develop module here. And I'm, I'm just gonna do a few things like maybe get a white balance uh, and open up the exposure a little bit, a little bit of contrast. Let's um, give a nice S curve. You know me, I love my S curves. And maybe a little bit of a vibrance boost now. And I'm going to desaturate. Actually, I'm going to go here to under the HSL. I'm going to go to saturation, take my target adjustment tool. I'm going to drop those greens. I'm going to desaturate those just a little bit. They were getting a bit too punchy for me. All right. So backslash to show the original. And then if we zoom in, we still got all that noise. So let's just say, you know what? And even I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a little bit of a post crop vignette just to bring focus to the center of the frame. All right. So now it, this would be the point in someone's workflow where they'd be like, all right, now I'm going to, I, I did my edits and I need to do some noise reduction. The raw workflow was that file plugin extras and then edit in Topaz photo AI to send it, um, using the edits you've already made, basically baking in those edits, what you can do is right click on the image, go to edit in, and then select Topaz Photo AI. And you'll have some options here. I'm just sticking with uh, JPEG, ProPhoto RGB, and the 8-bit uh, depth with the 300 resolution. So I'm gonna click edit here. That's gonna create a JPEG file and open that file in Topaz Photo AI. All right, so just like before, I'm not doing anything. I'm basically allowing autopilot to detect the noise and make its recommendations for noise reduction. I'm not, I'm not doing anything else. I want to make this as, you know, apples to apples as possible. So now I'm going to click save to Adobe Lightroom Classic again. And here is my photo. So let's compare the raw output to the JPEG output really quickly. Here is, if you remember, here is the DNG. Here is the JPEG file. And let's compare the two. And you can see just right off the bat, this is why I say that it is worthwhile considering sending, a, especially if it's a noisy raw file, why well, I think it's worth sending the raw file to Topaz Photo AI to get the noise reduction applied before you do anything else. Because 
look at the difference. Look at how much more detail there is in the face, in the fur. It's it's much softer here. Um, you know, if we zoom out and go to other areas of the image, same thing here, like the claws and the fur on the claws are so much sharper. So it, to me, it's it's just not, it's night and day. It's not a contest. If you have the ability to, where you have access to the noisy raw file, I would recommend sending it over and getting the DNG file. And you might be wondering, well, you know, how good is the DNG file in terms of when you're when you're using Lightroom to edit a raw file, that is, in my opinion, the, the purest or the cleanest way to edit your raw file. If you're using Lightroom, it, you know, Capture One has its own secret sauce for raw processing. On One has its own secret sauce for raw processing. And of course, Adobe does. So that I'm not arguing. I'm not arguing which raw processor is better, but I understand that editing a raw file gives you the most leverage and latitude in terms of stylization and also uh, editing tone. So what if I took this original raw file that I edited? You remember we edited it. Here's the, um, the original, and we just made some, some changes here under the develop module. What if I took this image and then I synced the changes over? So if I go here and I, again, I have the original image super selected and then I select this um, DNG. Let's go ahead and let's click sync settings. Now, you remember that I made a bunch of changes here under the basic. Um, I made changes to the tone curve and I made changes to HSL color. I also added a post crop vignette. So with all of those selected, let's click on synchronize. And if we were to compare these two, so again, this is the original raw. This is the DNG on the right. Um, you can see that it's okay. It's it's not bad um, in terms of the edit reproduction. What I would say is I'm going to undo um, that sync over here. And I'm going to select both of these images. In my experience, what I found is it's okay to sync almost everything except for the white balance. I would recommend not syncing white balance from the raw to the DNG. And so now I'm going to click synchronize and it that brings over pretty much all of the edits, except now I can go and get a custom white balance from this DNG file. So I can click somewhere, you know, over here. Um, if it's too strong or if it's not good enough, you can click a different area, but this gives me a pretty good result. And again, you're getting a DNG file, which is Adobe's kind of raw standard. It's their digital negative file. Um, and it's as close to a raw file as you're going to get without it being a raw. So what, what Topaz Photo AI does is outputs this DNG file and it gives you um, something that I would say is as close or, you know, of an approximation to the raw file as you're going to get. But now if we compare the two, um, you can see that it's actually looking pretty good. Um, the, the edits that I made came over pretty faithfully. And now we're left with, in my opinion, the best of both worlds. We have the edits from the raw file, but we also have the improved noise reduction results because we fed the raw file to Topaz Photo AI. And I want to illustrate that just one more time with this photo over here. So this is a photo I took um, with uh, a Sony. And if we look at the metadata here, so this was a Sony uh, a7 III. It is a raw file. And if we uh, zoom in, you can see that it's, um, it's quite noisy. And if I look at the uh, metadata over here, I shot at ISO 5000. So even at ISO 5000, it's still pretty noisy. So what I'm going to do is really quickly, let's create a virtual copy just to have kind of a ground truth here. Let's take the original image. I'm going to send it over to Topaz Photo AI. And again, if I zoom in a bit, we can see here the improvements that the raw noise model makes uh, to the image. So I'm just going to click on this button here to return back to Lightroom. All right. So we're back in Lightroom here and there. This is the virtual copy. This is the original. This is the DNG. So let's go ahead here really quickly. And again, I want to show you what happens if, let's say you were to edit your file first. So I'm going to go ahead, just get a, like a white balance from over there. And I'm just going to click auto. And 
make it a little bit brighter, and once again, add my S curve. Okay, so there, that's my image right here. And again, just like before, let's say you want to sync your edits over. So this is basically, I wanna show you kind of the compromise where you can make your edits to your raw file, but apply them to the DNG file, which again, benefits from the raw noise model, which is, as we saw with the monkey photo, a lot better, in, in my opinion, it's a lot better than just sending the JPEG with the edits baked in. So again, we take both of these images here and let's say I'll sync, I'm going to check none, start with basic and the tone curve. Those are the only things I did. And this time again, just like before, I'm gonna have white balance enabled. Let's click synchronize. And you can see even from the thumbnail, but let's compare them. You can see how the white balance is way off. The colors are just, the, the, is just way off. So let's undo that sync. Um, and so here it is again, there's the DNG file. Now I'm gonna sync these two, except I'm going to disable white balance, click synchronize, go to the DNG, get my white balance, which was from right around here. And now if we compare them, you can see that now they look pretty much spot on. There, there are just the slightest bits of difference in some of the color, especially kind of in the highlights over here. But to me, they're negligible and they are, they, they're just not as big of a deal to me when you see the kind of noise reduction results that you get. You know, I'm getting this clean result, but I'm still getting all the detail uh, in the feathers here. Uh, to me, that's worth it. Now, the last thing that I wanna do was show you um, what how the Lightroom handles noise. And so, and this is just kind of, uh, you know, what I'll do is I'll sync these two um, raw files. Well, the raw file with the virtual copy. So they're basically exactly the same. They should look exactly the same, which they do. Now I'm gonna take the virtual copy. I'll go to develop. Let's go all the way to the bottom here to noise reduction, which is right here. And the way I typically apply noise reduction is I like to zoom in so I can see the noise. And then I'm going to take, this is primarily luminance noise. So I'm gonna increase the luminance slider until it pretty much disappears, which is unfortunately almost to the max. Now you can see that we've obliterated detail. You can try and add detail. If you press and hold um, the option key while dragging or the alt key on windows, you'll get a grayscale preview, which makes it easier to see. And you can even, if you want, add a little bit of contrast. I'm basically just trying here to make it look good. But um, yes, there is no noise, but there's also like obliterated detail. And let's compare the two here. Lightroom on the left, uh, Topaz Photo AI on the right. And you can see there's, it's no contest. I mean, the, the detail that you get uh, preserved is is vastly improved. I mean, both of them don't have noise anymore. That is true, but the detail is completely obliterated with Lightroom's noise reduction, which is why it's really hard for me to recommend. I mean, it's in a pinch, it'll work. You know, if you're sharing the image on on Instagram and you know, 1024 by 1024, and no one's going to really zoom in, it should be fine. But especially if you're you need a larger format image for printing or for you know, a competition or whatever, then um, there's, there's, there's no contest. And so obviously I'm partial to Topaz Photo AI. There are a lot of other uh, apps out there. I'm not saying it's better than the others because I haven't really used all of them yet. I've used Topaz Photo AI. I've also used its predecessor, Denoise AI, and I've just been really happy with the results. So don't take this as me saying that you have to use this app, but know that I've had a lot of success with it. I'm actually really happy with it. And if you want to give it a try, then you can click on the link in the description below. Um, if you do click on that link, it's an affiliate link and you make a purchase, I will earn a small percentage of that. And um, it doesn't cost you anything, but it's a huge help to me. Uh, it helps me continue to make this kind of content for my channel and um, it just helps support my small business. So I wanna thank you in advance for that. Now. One of the things I know with Topaz Labs, as far as I know still, let's say you own, for example, Topaz uh, Denoise AI, and 
if you complete what's called their image quality bundle, so you buy Sharpen AI and Gigapixel AI, or if you just buy all three apps, you'll get Topaz Photo AI for free. So that's a really cool way to get the three original core apps, Topaz, Denoise AI, Sharpen AI, and Gigapixel AI, and then get Topaz Photo AI for free, which is the app that I showed you here. You can give it a try for yourself using one of their free trials. Just click on the link in the description below. And if you're looking for some additional tips on how to take less boring landscape photos, then click on this video here. Thanks a lot, everyone.